Yo, welcome to Hot Takes with Cheddar Chaz, but there's no hand holding. We do with fast and emotion. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification if you haven't already. Shout out to the middle of the light, DraftKings, Sopo Chico. You guys should support them because they support us. Today, I'm going to do something a little different. Instead of like repeating myself over and over again, I'm going to, I don't think I said this any better than in this particular uh, situation. So I'm going to play this audio and then I'm going to expound upon it after the audio is played. Oh, I'm gonna stop and explain things as it goes along. Bear with me for a second, please. I know it's something new. I know it's a little different, but you know, bear with your boy. Hold on. Um, For, for Brandon, and let, let me start with the Brandon's my brother. And I I, I wish, <laughs> I wish, I, I really wish the best for Brandon. Like I, I want this dude to succeed. But let me go to a few of these points before I, before I, I go, well, I'm going with this. All right, shout out to Space African Jesus. You know, Shannon South again, Jesus. right? But but wait, but wait, there's more, right? Wow. Um, and I and if I'm not mistaken, the Pelicans wow. are like seven and four when Brandon takes about twelve shots. Um, and so let me let's go to the numbers here. Let's go to the numbers here. Um, Brandon's still leading the team in field goal attempts, right? Uh, Brandon is shooting. He's averaging about three three points a game, shooting thirty four percent. That's awful. That's awful. Um, especially when it's made it's been made a point of emphasis for you to take more threes, right? And even Herb Jones is averaging three attempts, and he's shooting thirty nine. As bad as those numbers seem, those numbers are actually a lot worse when you take into consideration. Okay, if a guy goes one for two, that's fifty percent. So that's going to boost his um statistics. For example, uh, this is after the Jazz game. So, well, I'm speaking to you after the Jazz game. So, Brandon went one for two. He went 0 for 2 in the Jazz game. 0 for 2, right? Had he made one, he would have shot 50% for that game just on two attempts, though. So, that's not really a significant enough, you know, amount of volume to fully evaluate how well he's shooting. But, you know, now we'll see. Because he's not really taking enough threes for you to really scale them. Um, shooting a damn a, a Pelicans career low from the free throw line. Uh, shooting a Pelicans ca career low free throw attempts. Um, for the people who saying he's contributing in other areas, he's only averaging about five point four assists. That's the lowest it's been in the last three years as a Pelican. Take into consideration that CJ is averaging about five. You know what I'm saying? Brandon's averaging, what, four rebounds a game right now, 0 0.5 blocks, only two turnovers, 20, 21 points. That's not good. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's that's not necessarily incredibly effective. Effective. Um, Not to mention, this is a contract year. This is a, this is a contract. So during this uh, spill, I'm going to keep mentioning $40 million, $40 plus million, $40 plus million. That's because I don't believe that Brandon will be offered a max contract based on his production this year. Now, he could very well be offered a max contract. That max contract will be four years, about $221 million. That's $55 million annually for Brandon Ingram. That's insane. That is insane, and that is organizational, like, crippling. Like, that, this team, it may take a decade for this team to recover from a contract of that magnitude for a non-All-Star player. That's that's insane. It's insane to even fathom. It's insane to even fathom. That's elite of the elite money, or at least all. that's all NBA player money. That's multiple-time all NBA player money, multiple-time All-Star money. If you were multiple time all NBA player, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? If you're multiple time all star, you know, it makes sense. But for Brandon Ingram, it makes no sense. I'm going to let it continue. Like, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? This is the year that will ultimately decide if you get paid those big, that big money. Um, To digress a bit to our sell high conversation, that's what annoys me about the discourse surrounding trading Brandon this offseason. Because this, 
almost was Brandon's usage. I, I would have to go back and see, but he's shooting the most. Um, I think he, he has the longest time of possession with the ball on, on the team, and he has the most field goal attempts. So I would presume that he has the highest usage. Brandon's also, if I'm not mistaken, look, don't take my word for it. Go and check this after me. Brandon's also averaging the fewest passes made amongst the big three. He's averaging the fewest passes made amongst the big three. For his passes received, two passes made. So don't take my word for it. Just go look at these numbers. Go see what I'm talking about. Double check, which is a second highest usage, right? Even with those blowouts recently, I saw a couple people uh, allude to the fact that some of the Pelicans wins have been blowouts. So Brandon has been sitting. No, Brandon doesn't sit to like the fourth quarter and he's still averaging 30 minutes in those blowouts. He's not contributing to those blowouts. For example, Brandon shot 18 of 18 yesterday for, I'm sorry, Brandon shot, what, 8 of 18 yesterday for 18 points. 0 for 2 from 3. Now, that's not good. Like, that, that's, that's very not good for a guy you're considering giving max money to um, going into his 10th year. I mean, is Brandon a better player than that? Absolutely. But how much better... Do you expect Brandon Ingram to get? How much do you expect his game to appreciate? Brandon Ingram's numbers this season are worse than um, DeJounte Murray, who I'll talk about another time. They're on par with um, Jeremy Grant and even DeMar DeRozan. His numbers are comparable to those guys. His numbers are nowhere near like an elite, elite player. So it, it's something to think about, man. Check this out. It's not like Brandon's out there like, some guys have 22 points in the first quarter in a blowout and just sit, you know, float the rest of the game. And they spend the rest of the game getting rebounds and assists. Brandon's playing terrible. And I, I would say um, when you talk about paying a guy, because if, if the contract wasn't necessarily a part of the conversation, you probably would cut him more slack. You probably would cut him more slack. But the fact that the, com the money is a big part of the equation and – this is his own words. Brandon said, you know, I'm trying to get paid, I'm trying to get paid. You know, that was his words during media day. And there's been no effort being made to that. And I would say this isn't his first bad stretch of the season. There have been several instances. Brandon has 10 games. It might be 11 now where he scored under what, 16 points or below. He had a nine turnover game in Charlotte. Max players, superstar players don't have this many single digit. He has three single digit games for as fat and lazy and immature as Zion's been. He doesn't have a single digit game. He doesn't have a nine turnover game this season. And, you know, the bar is incredibly low to be better than Zion. Right. You know, this like Zion. Again, for all Zion's shortcomings coming into this season, Brandon should have been a, a clear tier above Zion. Clear tier above. Even in Zion's lowest moment in that uh, in-season tournament against the Lakers, Zion played better than Brandon, better than CJ. In, in his lowest moment publicly that we've seen, right, he was still better than those guys. That speaks volumes about those guys. That says more about them than it does him because th that goes to show you his floor is higher than those guys. Like, it's it's something to really think about seriously and look at. Even, like, with the numbers, Zion is averaging 14 attempts. That's about what? That, that number may have dropped since, the you know, since last game. But Zion is averaging about 14 attempts. That's if I'm not mistaken, 46th in the league, about 46th in the league. Brandon is averaging about, I think he's averaging 16 attempts. There were 19 early in the season, so they've dropped down since he's been in this rut. But yet and still, their numbers are about equal. Their numbers are about equal. That means Zion is incredibly more efficient than Brandon this year, and this is one of Zion's worst, this is his worst career year. Like, Think about that. And CJ's has been incredible. CJ's been incredible. So CJ's arguably the second best player on this team right now above Brandon Ingram. NBA fans, the wait is over. Basketball's back and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, is celebrating with an unbeatable offer. 
New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets for throwing down $5 on the NBA. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. You'll start the season with an instant dub. Basketball's more fun when you're in on the action. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code BOOT. New customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly for betting just $5 only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code BOOT. The crown is yours. Season going into this season, the ball was low. It, 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 it was it was down there. And it's like, bro, if you couldn't, if you couldn't rise to that occasion, what what makes me presume that when it is time to enact this extension, that you're gonna be going into year 10, year 10, that you're gonna think about this. Brand is trying to get his money right now, right? He's trying to do everything he can to get his bread right now. I respect that. The crazy part is uh, he's playing, you know, through things, nicks and bruises, things that Brandon Ingram might miss games for. He's playing through. What do you think he's going to do once he gets the money? He's not going to play through that shit no more. If he's not taking threes now, what do you think he's going to do to get the money? He's not going to take any threes. <laughs> like, like, once he, like, it, like you see a, a um, spike in some of his volume um, and contract is like you saw um, when he was up for his rookie extension. You saw him take the most trees he's ever taken, right? And again, this is now this is without Zion. Keep in mind. So now that he's playing with Zion, and it's even more important for him to take threes. They've made a, a point of emphasis to him to, for him to take more threes. The league has changed since then. This is about what four, this is four years ago. The league has changed since then. So, like, yo, we need you to take threes, brother. He's still averaging about three threes a game. And that number is lower than that because he has a couple games, maybe like a few where he's taken, um, you know, maybe five or six or even uh, 11. The most he's taken is like 11. But those are games where it's like, yo, I'm shooting threes tonight. Like, it's not in the flow of the game. He's purposely hunting those particular shots. That's not something that's sustainable. That's something that he's making, like, that's the game plan for that night. That's not something that happens in the floor of the game or something that's happening naturally. You know what I'm saying? So that's a problem. Improve as a three-point shooter, improve as a, a shot distributor, improve as a rebounder. Like in the last couple of games specifically, Brandon's been getting killed um defensively. Like guys, guys have been, you know, guys have been handling them pretty bad. Yo, Colin Sexton was, was was killing Brandon the other day. I know he beat the dog shit out the Jazz, but Colin Sexton was, was, was busting Brandon ass. He was busting Brandon ass. Going into year 10, when this contract is set to begin, this extension is supposedly set to begin, Do you? what do you expect Brandon to get better at? Athletically, he's going to be slowing down by that point. Uh, his three-point shooting hasn't improved at this point, or he has a reluctancy to even take them. Like he's he's not like getting physically bigger, so he's not gonna necessarily be a stronger defender. Like he's only he's not really averaging many blocks right now. He's having a a decent like defensive season, but it's like it's kind of like glances of good defense, kind of like in fever. It's glances of good defense, but consistently he's been a, a solid to poor defender. So I don't know if it's conditioning issue, but these numbers are kind of on par with the rest of his career. I would say Brandon had a distinct advantage the last couple of years because he was able to play. He was able to rest while everyone else was playing. So when he was coming back, he had like fresh legs and things of that nature. He was able to finish the season in stride. So the shot profile just again, someone mentioned the shot profile. The shot profile just hasn't improved. And to go back to these in closing, Look at these numbers. That says to me, like, like, yo, you ain't really good. Even. We ain't winning when you taking shots. So how do you really contribute to us winning? Like, what do you really, what do you do? Like, you know what I'm saying? What, what do you really, what do you do? <laughs> You're not out there rebounding. You're not like passing the shit out the ball, really. Like, you know, and... It's it just, you know, the offensive fouls are still a thing. It, it's just, is Brandon Ingram going to be worth 40 something million dollars? I, I would argue that he's overpaid right now when I see with dudes like Colin Sexton. So, yeah, um, this is going to be part one. This is going to be part one. And I'm going to follow up on this. I'm going to look at some of you guys' comments and I'm going to uh, 
answer some of the comments in the next video. But in closing, I'll say this. Um, the Pelicans have two options. They can go all in right now and try to compete for a championship this year, which I think I think they got a solid chance. They find the right guy, get um a good uh second unit uh rim defender. I think the Pelicans got a chance at the Western Conference Finals this year. They just need things to, you know, they need a commitment from Brandon to shoot threes and need Zion to be consistent defensively and get some fucking rebounds and continue to get in shape. They need to embrace a high-paced back brand of basketball, kind of like what you saw in Utah. No, Utah isn't a very good team, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. Now, you can either do that or you can go all the way out. And what I mean by that is you can move off of that contract before you ultimately have to pay him and his value is totally depreciated. There was a, a, a Bulls rider who came out recently and he spoke about Zach Levine. He said guys are turning up their nose at Zach Levine's contract or turned off by Zach Levine's contract because why sign or trade for Zach Levine when you can get Terry Rozier who's about 80, 90% of Zach Levine for a fraction of the cost. Those contracts, people talk about the cap going up. People have very limited understanding of the cap situation for the Pelicans. And it shows when they speak, right? This upcoming offseason, if the Pelicans don't do anything, if they just let JV to expire, they'll have nine players under contract and they'll be $28 million away from the luxury tax. That's $28 million this team would have to improve with nine players on the roster. Mind you, you don't have a starting center. You don't really have a backup center. You still don't have a backup point guard. Najee's expiring. Jose is a team option, but there's a lot of roster spots to fill up with about $28 million. Now, in fairness, you don't have to get out of the tax until you end the season. But that means teams are going to be charging you a premium to take on your player so you conduct the tax, i.e., you had to pay a second round there to give away uh Kyra Lewis, and you had to pay four second rounders to get away, give away Devontae Graham. So teams are gonna be charging you a premium, and the Pelicans only have one second rounder left. So that means by next season, if the Pelicans were to keep this team together and it doesn't look like that team is gonna be a championship team, they'll start having to attach their first round picks to get get from underneath the luxury tax they're probably going to have to start doing that this offseason truthfully like when you look at brandon ingram's situation if the pelicans are looking to quote unquote get better brandon's already going to be in year nine this offseason right year nine he's going to be about 26 27 that's not bad that's still you know the beginning of his prime um or like the middle of his prime rather um who's really what team is out there saying yo i need a wing that doesn't shoot threes that's going to be making about 55 million dollars going into year 10 what what team is out there looking for demar Derozan? what team is out there saying demar Derozan is the final piece to this roster what team you know what I'm saying? It, it's it's going to be a very difficult situation for the Pelicans this offseason. Moving CJ doesn't make any sense because CJ's contract is declining. CJ by next offseason is on a very attractive contract because you got what next season and the following season at like 30 million, then like what I know, I think it's 30, maybe two, and it goes to 30, something like that. But it's a declining contract, and that new CBA that's going to be great. And you have to extend Trey Murphy, so Brandon Ingram and Trey Murphy's contract extensions will be kicking in at the same time, so you'll have even less room available. Mind you, you still haven't filled out the rest of this roster, you still got to fill out the rest of this roster. So that's something to consider. Leave your questions and comments. I'll address them on the next video. This is probably going to be a multi-part video because I feel like y'all being cheated because no one is really talking about this but us here at Bucru Media. No one's really talking about the future and the ramifications of this particular season for Brandon Ingram. And I want Brandon to succeed. I just $55 million for, for a maybe 40-ish, 50-ish top. 40-ish, 50-ish player. That's way too much for this organization to survive. But that's meant to show the show today, man. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. I'm out. Peace.